Okay, I just saw Deadpool 2 and I really have to talk about it. So heads up, major, major spoilers are incoming. I will give you a few seconds to nope out of here if you haven't seen the movie and you want to go into it fresh. Big spoilers. Mm. Okay, ready? Let's do this. So I freaking loved Deadpool 2, uh, but I knew I would because the first Deadpool is already one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. Uh, and so I expected this one to be almost as good. And it was. However, the beginning of the movie worried me a little and still makes me think that it could have been done better in one major way. Again, spoilers. Women in Refrigerators is a trope coined by comics writer Gail Simone uh, to describe the plot device in which a male main character's story arc is advanced by brutally murdering or sometimes raping, sometimes both, uh, his wife, his girlfriend, his crush, whatever. It's named after a particularly galling example in which a villain murders Green Lantern's girlfriend, her name doesn't matter, uh, and shoves her body in the fridge for him to find. Uh, it's inherently sexist because it's pretty much always a male protagonist and a female victim who is never heard from again. She literally only exists to die so that the protagonist can have some angst and momentum. I really enjoy it when films subvert this narrative. One example is John Wick, in which he does lose his wife at the start of the film, but that's not what drives the movie's storyline. In fact, it's his dog that gets put in the refrigerator. Uh, it's the exact same trope, but instead of a woman, it's a dog. Uh, I hate seeing an animal hurt in a film, but I honestly love that. Uh, Deadpool 2 opens with Deadpool's girlfriend from the first film, Vanessa, getting murdered by a criminal who Deadpool had been tracking down. This is classic refrigeration. Uh, she dies, which tears Deadpool apart, gives him nothing left to live for, provides the impetus for him to build himself back up, to learn what family means, why life is worth living. Because of that, I was disappointed, and considering how self-aware Deadpool is, I thought that they might immediately undo her death somehow to subvert it. Uh, here's the surprising thing, though. The writers of this film apparently weren't as self-aware uh, about comics as Deadpool usually is. And honestly, it's probably because they're men. Uh, in an interview with Vulture, Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick admitted that they had never even heard of the trope and hadn't considered it at all. In a way, it's understandable because they're human and they can't be expected to know everything. But in another way, it's a bit unforgivable for the writers of Deadpool to miss such a huge trope. Deadpool is all about, uh, about highlighting tropes and making fun of them. Uh, in case you don't know, Deadpool's whole thing is that he breaks the fourth wall and is fully aware that he's in a comic book, or in this case, a comic book movie. He tells Josh Brolin's cable that he's so dark he should be in the DC universe, and then calls him Thanos because Brolin also plays that character in Infinity Wars, just to name two small examples. It's what makes Deadpool so fun. It's one of the few superhero movies where I managed to catch almost all of the Easter eggs as a person who was once completely obsessed with the 80s and 90s era X-Men and no other comic books. Uh, it really feels like if they had had a single woman look at the script, uh, that could have helped them avoid a lazy, sexist trope. Though then they might have had to rewrite the entire thing. Uh, as an aside, I am always available for punching up a script. For example, in the first Deadpool, when Deadpool and Weasel walk into the strip club, Weasel asks Deadpool how he knew Vanessa worked there, and Deadpool basically says it's been it's because he was following her around or whatever. But he should have said because Stan Lee is the announcer here. See, I can help. Call me for Deadpool three. Anyway, back to Deadpool 2. Vanessa gets put in the fridge, uh, which was disappointing and not surprising at all because it's such a trope. To, I think a lot of maybe women particularly who watch this film, that death doesn't come as a shock. Not as much of a shock as killing off all of the characters in their X-Force team, except for Domino. 
That was a surprising shock that came out of nowhere because it's not based on an existing trope. It's one of the problems with relying on a trope is that you uh, can no longer surprise your audience. They see this coming. Oh, the girlfriend dies and now he's going to build himself up. The only thing that I found shocking was how much it did uh, sort of go along with the trope. I was surprised they didn't subvert it more. But what are you going to do? Uh, Gail Simone, who, as I mentioned, helped coin this trope, says on Twitter that she doesn't actually think that this fits in with the trope. She correctly points out that an important part of the trope is that the character being refrigerated disappears from the film, uh, from the narrative, never to be seen again, uh, because she no longer matters. But in Deadpool 2, of course, Vanessa is still there as a beautiful angel in heaven, or some version thereof, who communicates with Wade uh, in riddles, leading him to where he needs to go. And of course, in the end, well, after the end, mid-credits, Deadpool goes back in time and saves her. It's a fair point, but if anything, it only elevates Vanessa slightly above refrigeration. Uh, She's mostly absent from the story after her death, and when she is in it, she only exists to further motivate Deadpool. You could argue that every character in a Deadpool movie is there to further Deadpool along his hero's journey, and you would be right. But many of them still have their own motivations, their own arcs. Cable, for instance, is trying to save his wife and child. Russell wants revenge on his abusers and to find a real family to love him. Peter, well, Peter just wants to have a fun adventure. Uh, But don't be fooled, he is a fully formed character. Uh, Seriously, you can follow him on Twitter. He hates swans. He loves his wife, Susan, and her personal trainer, Gus. Vanessa here is really an anima, that otherworldly Jungian spirit that guides the protagonist along his journey. So sure, she's not just a girlfriend stuffed in a fridge, never to be seen again, but she was used in that typically cliche way that a murdered woman is usually used. And even though she at times just barely subverts the trope, And even though the film is massively entertaining and I fucking loved it, it's still a little disappointing that the writers didn't do something more creative. The good news, in my opinion, is that since Deadpool reversed her death, there's a chance for Deadpool 3 to be really amazingly creative with her character. I want to see Deadpool go through some shit with Vanessa still beside him for once. I mean, she doesn't need to be a superhero, though that could still happen since the writers say that They could finally turn her into Copycat, who can take on other mutants' abilities. Honestly, that would be awesome. I would love to see her kicking ass. But I also think it would be awesome for Deadpool and Vanessa to start a family. A weird, fucked up family, but a family. My favorite part of the first Deadpool was how strong and surprisingly healthy their relationship was. And superhero films never really explore that sort of thing without... Well, without killing the wife and child to advance the storyline. Oh, wait, that happened to Cable, didn't it? Probably should have mentioned that. Cable's wife got refrigerated (laughs) and also reversed at the end. Okay, so anyway, all I really want from Deadpool 3 is more amazing sex scenes between Wade and Vanessa. Uh, If they call it Deadpool 3 Happy International Women's Day, all will be forgiven. Uh, I'm interested in what you guys think of the movie uh, and where you hope that the series will go from here. So let me know in the comments.